we've made it even easier to set up your Strapi app and deploy it using Cleaver. So check this out. I have a server right here called Strapi app. I'm just gonna click into it and then click on add site. And then for app type, when you click on that and scroll down, we now have a dedicated app type for Strapi. What Cleaver is gonna do is basically just allow you to do a couple clicks within Cleaver to set up your Strapi app and deploy it. And a lot of the configurations will happen behind the scenes for you. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna click on Strapi there and then use a temporary domain. Under advanced options, I wanna show you a couple things. So it's automatically gonna be placed on this port. You could change it if you'd like, but that's just the default one that Cleaver will add it to. And then for Node.js version, I already have Node.js 16 installed on the server. If I didn't have anything installed, you could select either Node.js 12 or 14 or 16. Uh, be sure to always select an even version of Node.js or really most Node apps actually. You want to install the even versions are a lot more stable than the odd versions. And for Node.js 16 in particular, you could use this with the Strapi version 4 applications. If your app is using Strapi version 3, use either Node.js 12 or 14 for a Strapi version 3 application. And another thing is if I click on Setup Database right here, I can select what kind of database server type I want to use. I'm just going to leave it as MySQL 8.0. And then it will automatically create a database name and user and password. And then Cleaver will associate all this to a .env file for your application. So it will string it all together so you don't have to. All right, let's click on Add. Okay, so this is adding this site now. And once that's done, we'll see some confetti. And then click on Setup and Deploy. This is gonna take you to the web app section over here to a new web app that was created for that site. And it takes you directly into settings and code repository where we're gonna to tie together the version control provider. And in my case, I'm using GitHub, so I'm gonna select that profile. And then we just wanna designate the repository and the branch to deploy. So where is my code? I put this under Strapi4 and the branch is master. And I'm gonna click on update to save that out. All right, so that's saved. So I'm gonna just show you a couple things real quick. Since I use GitHub, it also enabled this tab. If you're wanting to use GitHub Actions to build your application, be sure to watch the whole video because there's a couple little modifications that we'll make in order for it to work appropriately. All right, and if I click on build, I can see that the entry point is NPM, argument start. So this is all the basic defaults for a Strapi application. You can, of course, change this if you need to, if you customize it a little bit. And then an environment, this is gonna load the ENV, and then we can see the database connection variables here from when we first set up the site. And then deployment hooks. Uh, this is just a standard set if you have anything special. If you have anything additional that you need to do during a deployment for your application, feel free to go ahead and add a new hook, and then you could create a custom deployment hook. But we have everything basically set up, so let's go ahead and just deploy it out. Okay, and there's the confetti. So the site has been deployed and we're getting some ping times back. We're getting 200 codes, so it looks like it was successful. Let's go ahead and click on visit site and view it. Okay, so this is what we wanna see. We have the production site up. Of course, if you pin admin to the very end of the URL, it should take you to the admin login. And this will be the initial setup. Okay, awesome, so we have it up and running. Let's go back to Cleaver. I'm just gonna X out this. I wanna point out a little bit of troubleshooting techniques. Uh, a lot of deployments, you might see that everything completed successfully, but when you go to the URL, you see a 502 error. If that happens for you, be sure to check your PM2 logs. Once a deployment completes, at the very top right here, it automatically pulls the latest PM2 logs and just scroll to the very bottom and then this is what you wanna see. You wanna see that's online. Other places that you could go to look at the PM2 logs are mostly on the server, of course. So if I go to the network here, I could just click right over to that related server and then go to the services section. And one good nifty thing is look at the node 16 and check the heartbeat and then scroll down a bit. This will give you more lines of context to look at as well as a report for the individual application. Um, but really, I look at the bottom right here. Uh, we see that the server wasn't started properly, but eventually it was, so we could ignore that. But sometimes you might see that there is a port conflict issue or maybe there's a database connection issue that will very clearly come up within the PM2 log. And another place that you can look at it is under the log section and then click on PM2 logs down here. 
and then load that report. And then same thing, we could look at the PMT logs here. And one quick pro tip, actually, if I go back to the web app and then click into the web app, we see the PM2 process report for that particular application here. If you see it offline or if you see a 502 error, really a good thing to do as well is just to click on restart app and that will restart the PM2 process and then look again to see if the site generates after that. All right, that was just a couple troubleshooting tips I wanted to provide. Now to go to GitHub Actions, we're gonna go back to the settings section. So if you have GitHub for your version control provider, you could use the GitHub Actions integration. And this is a pretty good option if you're using a Strapi app, especially if you're using more of an economic server. And I'm thinking like a DigitalOcean $5 droplet. A lot of times they don't have enough memory to build the application on the server, especially if you have other sites on the server you might hit a JavaScript out of memory error. I think it's, it says something like that. So a good thing that you could try is, if you have GitHub, is to enable GitHub Actions. That way the build is actually done on GitHubs. So save your server's processing power. And to enable that, you'll want to go ahead and enable GitHub Actions and then click on Update. So doing that will update your project. To show you what that looks like, let's go to Deployments here and just a quick little way to get over to GitHub, um, go to code, and then we see this GitHub workflow file is now here. So Cleaver added this workflow file. You could actually go in here and make some additional edits if you'd like, if you would like to do some automated testing before it deploys. Uh, feel free to go in and edit the file, anything above this line right here. And since I enabled GitHub Actions, it also triggers a initial run, so I could see that running right here. But let's go back. There's one thing I was mentioning before that you may have to do if you have different environment variables that you have for your application is using the GitHub Actions process actually ignores, for whatever reason, the environment variables. But what you can do is basically copy this connection information for database and then just paste it over into settings, build, and then within the PM2 ecosystem section under the environment section, just paste that in there. And this is what the Strapi app is gonna do. It's not gonna go off the .env file, it's just gonna go off environment settings triggered by PM2. And of course you wanna update the format. So put quotations around the key names and then the colons and then quotations around this. So just keep doing that for the rest of these variables here and then run the deployment again and then it should work without any errors.